This video is about the Iran-Contra affair. This affair dates back to the years 1985, 86 and 87. There was a COVID operation of the Reagan administration, the CIA sold arms to Iran and the profits from these arms deals were used to finance the Contras in Nicaragua. Key figures in this operation were Caspar Weinberger, the Secretary of Defense, the National Security Advisor, John Poindexter, Lieutenant Colonel Oliver North, a member of the National Security Council, and Poindexter's predecessor, Robert McFarlane. To the background. In Nicaragua, socialist Sandinistas take over the power, take over power, and they face the Contras in a guerrilla war. The Contras are supported by the US, and from 1981, we have a very conservative and anti-communist government in Washington under President Reagan. Reagan and his administration were very happy to support the Contras, but they were not allowed to, because of the Boland Amendments, stating clearly there can't be any, any intervention in middle America by the government or the CIA. In, a, in Iran, there was the Islamic Revolution. Iran was an Islamic State, Islamic Republic. Furthermore, there was the Iran hostage crisis. Fundamentalists held US diplomats hostage for 444 days. So then, it is clear, Iran and the United States were enemies. In the mid-1980s, several US citizens were hostages in Lebanon, taken by the Hezbollah, and the Hezbollah was under significant influence coming from Iran. Iran needed weapons, because the country was in, the war, in war with Iraq, but had difficulties to achieve these, to get these weapons, because of an international embargo. Under the supervision of um, McFarlane, the National Security Council came up with a plan, why don't we supply Iran with weapons via Israel? And now you may say, bloody hell, what's that? Makes no sense whatsoever, but it actually can make sense, because through these deals, the US wants to support moderate groups in Iran, establish relations to a geostrategically, geostrategically massively important country, and to have something to bargain with uh, with regards to the US hostages, to release of the US hostages in the Middle East. This plan was put into action, and then on, in December 1985, McFarlane resigned and was succeeded by John Poindexter. The same day, Lieutenant Colonel North came up with a plan, why don't we leave the Israeli out and use the profits from these weapons, weapon deals to finance the Contras in Nicaragua. Very good plan, and it went ahead. It seemed to be happy days. But then, the plane came down in Nicaragua, the Sandinistas shot down a plane with weapons for the Contras, and the survivor, Hasenfus, confirmed this is coming from the CIA supplying the Contras with weapons. So one event you could think, ah, that could pass, but there was another event, a Lebanese magazine reported about the weapons for hostages deals. North and Point X destroyed a large number of documents, but it has to be said that Reagan in initiated the Tower Commission to investigate the Iran Contra incidents. And there was a very detailed report. Uh, main results were North Point X and Weinberger. That was not right what they were doing. Reagan did not have the full operation knowledge but he should have managed his employees better. Furthermore, there was a congressional committee, but the affair was over by now. The key figures within the operation were had to re resign, brought to trial, but there was no imprisonment. So Oliver North, Weinberger, Pointex and McFarlane. Reagan's involvement was never fully clear. Yeah, it was never fully clear how Reagan's involvement was how much he was involved. But his popularity dropped on a, to a low point and he, re he received the nickname the Teflon President. It seems that nothing of this affair would stick to him. But you have to keep in mind, Reagan was the president with the highest approval in the population when leaving office. And Oliver North became an icon for the conservatives in the United States. That was the Iran-Contra affair in five.